clitoris. <laughs> Well, this is a good way to intro. Hey, what up, guys? It's Julia Vance Fleeker, and on today's show, we got who? I, I don't need to say it, but you could say it. Bob. Bob. Bob is in the building, baby. Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. I'm Swaco the Child. Sw oh, damn. I was just, I'm going to call you Bob now. Is that okay? Call me Jack. Jack. I'll call you Jack. Jack Daniels. Is that what's the in your cup? The proud and true one and only savior of the human race <laughs> definitely no i'm just playing okay so actually this isn't a podcast this is a casting couch for a new uh porn session so what are you willing to do for a piece of change today i'm willing to do whatever it takes <laughs> <laughs> no i'm joking it is a podcast all right so you Aww, just <laughs> you got me all hyped up for nothing of course i was ready you know listen it's a beautiful couch this is all something right, I'm that you here. see <laughs> Well, that's the end of the interview. This is shorter than, um, what you call it, Birdman and uh, Power 105. <laughs> All right, he's back. Okay, we're back. All right, we're going to do the intro again, okay? Okay. All right. I'm joking. We're just going to jump straight into the questions. Okay. So, you, okay. <laughs> so you just dropped Miss Screen and that whole album, it's, it's just so cheesy of me to say, but it really does remind me of a Miss Screen night. And it's a big difference from Trippy Nights that you released two years ago, I believe, yeah. 20, 2017. Someone did their research. Oh, of course. That's what I do. I got to know who was on my show, right? Boom. Yeah. Boom. Exactly. So um, what were your expectations for your audience with this particular album? Or is it an album or EP? Project. Project. Yeah, because it's like seven songs long. Eight songs. Eight songs. Oh, if you include one? Fast. Okay. So I, I don't think I did. I should have. Well, yeah. Well, hold on. It's Yeah, it's eight songs. You uh, sure is it eight or seven? Because I really, I really wait, did my research. Hold on, is it seven? It's eight. Dead ass. Oh fuck you over there, man. You made me look. That's stupid. my manager. <laughs> That's my manager right there. <laughs> he stepped in to save the day. Yeah, I hope I'm not wrong. I swore it was seven. Jesus. No, I, I'm pretty it? sure it's eight. Well, hold I'm on. telling Let's, you, you're there's wrong. There's Cayman. There's Dork. Uh, no sleep in my body. Right. Sober. Is it yeah. Damn. You got me. Ah! <laughs> okay, so what were my expectations? Yeah, well, because it's like obviously a big difference between Trippy Nights and this project. What were your expectations for your audience? Well, with this project for your audience. It, the purpose of the project was to just show people everything. Mm -hmm. Like give start to have people understand and have it be a segue from fast into... Uh, a broader understanding of my music and who I am. That's so that was, that was the purpose of this. And I, I feel like, I mean, the expectation was just that it was right. to get people to understand. And I think for everyone that listens to it, it, it does a pretty good job. Yeah. Cause it feels like honestly, a lot of stadium music. So when you, you go to do your concerts, you know, when you hear the loud bass or you hear certain chords and songs, they kind of hit you in a different way when you're in a concert setting. So it gives you a different vibe. You have way more fun with it. So I really like the album. Well, project. Oh, thank you. No, I did. It was like, damn, that's like I always look for songs or like projects I could actually play in my car. And I'm that annoying person that you pull up next to and you hear just like, <laughs> like right next to. Yeah. So if I could turn it up loud, I'm with it all the way. So I fuck with it. Yeah, that was, I mean. When, whenever I make music, that's the goal is, is it, sla it slaps in the car, yeah. no matter what type of song it is. Yeah. Give me a soft, sad, I'm in the car crying song, but yeah. it's still loud and I'm still <laughs> bumping it. Absolutely. So like I said before, like the the difference between your, your last project and this project are obviously very different. What was the directional change? And just get into how you created Miss Korean. So my last my last project, nobody's even asked me about that because it was so long ago. Because yeah. it was in such an early stage where I didn't have anything really. It right. was just there. Right. And the only thing that kind of blew up off it was the song, the song "Trippy Nights." Because my friend Luis Mora, he he's a YouTuber. He used it in like a skate edit mm. uh, that that blew up a really big anticipated skate edit. What what that represented for me back then. There, there wasn't like a goal or anything I wanted mm. to accomplish. It was just what I was working on at the time, if that makes sense. And right. that was back in 2017 that right. I dropped it. So, and then there was a big like period when I was uh, under a management deal and I was working on a lot of music. Like some of the songs uh, on Miscreant 
Like, No Sleep in My Body, I made it last year. Oh, like, wow. I made it, Novocaine, I made it last year. Right. And so did so, so I, Sober, too. Those are, like, older songs that I've been sitting on for a while because I've been, like, waiting. Hmm, when when can I drop this? And it gets yeah. the audience that I, like, it gets what I need it to get because they're good songs. I, I didn't feel like that was on your SoundCloud, too, those songs. Were they not? No. No? No, no, no. The songs that were on my SoundCloud and, like, the in-between period were yeah. all the... uh all the beat video songs that we would drop. Then there was stuff like Never Enough. There was The View. And there was uh, Henny in the Trunk. Those were a oh, couple yeah, of the songs. I remember Henny in the Trunk. That was a good one. I like hey. that. <laughs> uh, so back then, it was kind of just what I was going through. There, Again, there wasn't really a goal. Mm. This one, like I said, the goal was, because I have so much music in the vault, that's why... There was the songs there was is because I had a goal. It wasn't just, oh, what's the best music? I'm putting the best music. Mm. It, it was, it, it, I had a specific function. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? No, it definitely does. I, I appreciate it. I think it's like when you, you say stuff like that, creative minds can kind of understand. Not trying to hype myself up a little bit, but kind of. Wink, wink. Hey. <laughs> oh, this is the first time I looked at the TV <laughs> this entire interview. I'm impressed with myself. Hey, how's it going? It's a beautiful thing. You got a beautiful face too, by the way, so you should be looking at yourself. <laughs> Are you inflating my self-confidence? A little bit. A little bit. I think that's, you know, somewhat of my job, but not really. Hey, high five. High five. I'm inflating your self-confidence hey, too. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. So every song off of Miss Korean, by the way, except for the uh, 626305 project is produced by yourself. Why do you think that's important for you to do? Because it's almost like a rust effect to me because most artists actually don't really do a lot of their own creative process. But for you, you actually do do almost all except for that one. Well, yeah, or I, I at least co-produce everything. Yeah. Mo mo now, especially... I don't really, I'm not usually the sole producer anymore, oh, but it's okay. like, well, even on Miss, on Miss Grant, there were a handful of songs I was the sole producer, but it was mainly, I, I, I'm the co-producer, like, I work with other people. Okay. So. Can you break down what that means, too? Because I don't think many people out there actually really know what a co-producer is. So what, what in, like, I don't mean to kind of change it a little bit, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what exactly is a co-producer for, you know, certain projects or for this project well, like co-producer just means that like both people produced it to more than one person produced okay. it. So, and what producing means is what in different genres, it means different things. Right. But for, for rap for, and for a lot of what I'm doing, it means you made the beat. Okay, cool. And that's pretty much what it means. Yeah. So when I say I'm working with co-producers, it means multiple people are helping to construct the beat and the structure of everything. And like the sonics of the entire song. Okay, okay. Awesome. And then like in different genres, like rock and stuff, the the producer is just the 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 one that like arranges everything and puts everything together and adds all the extra shit. Yeah. Because in like rock music, the the band or the artist is already gonna come come in this and the song's done. So it's That's a little true. bit different in different genres. Okay, awesome. And also just kind of moving away from that. You know, you just talked about the accidental YouTube. We obviously know the story with Fast and TikTok. Yeah. Did you even expect any of that stuff to happen? Or did you just went in with the mindset, oh, this is a song, and then just boom, it just kind of took off? I knew it was a good song, and I knew it would do good, but I didn't know it would do that good. That song does slap, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone everyone I knew was like, this is, this is the one. So I was like, all right, it's going to do good. But like I said, I didn't know it was going to do that good. Now, that intro, though, is tough, though, by the way. I, I can't do it. What is that like? It sounds almost like a, a distorted elephant, kind of. It's a. It's literally a vocal sample that my homie Ken's Dean just like put into. I don't even know what effects processor, but like some type of guitar effects okay. processor, and then just mess around with it, and then boom, it sounded like that. It's a yeah, vocal I was sample. Like, whoa, that's like that shit kind of hard though. Almost blew out my speakers, by the way. Thanks a lot. Hey. Almost. Well, you know. I had to turn it down. I was like, oh god, let me turn the bass down on this. I'm not gonna have any speakers after this. So how did you end up uh, collabing with Offset and A Boogie? Because A Boogie and Offset, I, I know they're signed to Atlantic as well, but how did that actually come about? We just, we put together a list of people that we thought would be tied on it, and yeah. we started hitting people up. Now and Offset went off on that one. Yeah. He definitely did. Both of them went off. Yeah, he did, for sure. I do like A Boogie a lot. You know what? I didn't like... um look back at it at first, but then it kind of grew on me. Now I find myself singing it. Yeah, it's fire. It's a super good song. <laughs> Looking at look yourself back in the mirror. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> me too. 
Okay. So what's <laughs> what's a favorite song for you off of Miscreant? Uh Damn, did I hit you with one? Huh? Did I hit you with one? A brain buster? A brain Brain blast. Yep, <laughs> brain blast. Uh <laughs> I would say probably the one that I listen to the most is uh, Novocaine. Okay. Awesome. That's probably the one I listen to the most out of all of them. Why is that? Is it more personal for you or? Kind of, but it's a lot. I mean, at least recently, a lot of what I listen to is more indie stuff in general. Okay. And that's just the that's just the vibe that for some reason I've been attracted to as of recent. And I don't know. It's just something about that song that I feel represents something more authentic. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. It, well, I like not, that. not, I don't want to say more, but no, I like that word though. I like yeah, that. Cause, it's good. I don't know. It's just cause it's real instruments. Oh, well, you just segue right into my next question. Actually, that was ah. perfect. You didn't even know, but now uh, did you trick me? I kind of did no. a little bit. So obviously, uh, I don't know if many people know out there that you started off as a drummer, you're an actual musician. Yeah. And then you did production first, and then you phased into rapping. So yeah. besides, obviously, the whole Kanye West thing that you had on your Instagram, who would you like to collaborate with production-wise? Production-wise? Yeah. DJ Mustard. Done. Really? Yeah, because that was the reason I made beats in the first place. I haven't met him, but I saw a video on Genius where he like was like, yo, Fast is dope. Like, he, like, reviewed it or whatever. Oh, wow. Like, you know how they have, like, those, like, s such and such reacts to new rappers, yeah. right? Like, DJ Mustard reacted to new West Coast rappers. Okay. And I was one of them, and that was tight. Has he reached out to you or not yet? No, not yet. Aw, oh, damn. I'm not tripping, though. I'll meet him. So, DJ Mustard, uh, let's get a collab going. I think that would be tough, actually. Yeah, well, I like, that's just one of the people. Like, there's a, there's a lot of people I want to work with. That's just one that, because that was the reason I started making, like, just beats in the right. first place. Cause I, I was making like hella music before that, but that's making when beats I was off asses too. Huh? Making beats off asses too. Ah, uh, yeah. I've there. been doing that for a while. <laughs> and I'm not talking about production. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weirdest <laughs> before I got here, honestly, you reminded me like I, Here's something that most people don't know. I actually went to um, like audio school mm. and I had like a, a professor that would just literally carry around his sound recorder with him and he would just make beats off of like trains or the sounds yeah, like the, yeah, uh, yeah. the exhaust pipe going or whatever. So what's the weirdest or the most interesting thing that you've actually created a beat out of? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think that we, we, I think. When we when we went to the zoo and there was like a like lion there was like a roar from a lion like That's the lions dope. roared, and then I I I remember I made a a video out of that but I actually have used that sound like to make beats. No before. way. Not just like in like the like the little dumb videos, but I've actually okay. like used that one. And okay. to be honest, a lot of the like the weird sound videos most of the time I don't actually go and get weird sounds to make beats. That was just for the. <laughs> just, oh, damn, videos. man, you tricked me. You got me out here looking <laughs> stupid, man. He's like, bitch, listen. <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> no, like, yeah, there's not that many times outside of those beat videos where I would actually go and, like, grab sounds so to make some shit. Let's make a challenge now, your next project. I want to hear something. I'm pretty sure all your fans want to see how creative you can get by doing that. I think that would be dope. Well, because we've met, like, like, all the songs, all the challenges or whatever, like, we uploaded those. Like, those did pretty good. Those beats are cool. I can say I can do whatever. So, oh, let's see it, man. You said you could do whatever. Oh, Jesus. What would you do for a strange piece of change? I think I said that wrong anyway. A piece what of change. What would you do for so a Klondike bar? Yeah, sure. Why not? I think I messed up that whole. You know what? <laughs> Screw this. All right. I'm going to move into my last question because I messed up. All right. Um, five fast facts about Swaco. This is actually my favorite part of the show. Okay. So don't think too hard. It's fast. This is intimidating. Okay. Uh, I have a fake spray tan on right now. Oh, shit. For real? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> you just said I something. Was, uh, 
all right, whatever. That was one. Uh, no, like I'm not even explaining why, but <laughs> there is a very I was funny going explanation. To ask you, but you don't have to. Uh, shit, I don't even fucking know. Did you just wake up today? Did yeah, I woke up, up like at eleven. Damn! So you uh, wake up late? Always. So is that a is that a fact? That's a fast I wake fast, up yeah. late. That's a good one. Uh. Don't say the one about your name. We already know that one. The Swedish way. You know, I'm not. I don't know. Um, are those real glasses? Yes, these are real glasses. Ah, oh, damn. I wear real glasses. I'm totally, completely fucking blind if I don't have my glasses. No way. Take yeah. them off. Let me test this theory out. How many fingers? I mean, I can see that. Damn. Like, come on. Somebody else do it. Yeah, I can't see over there. Over there, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how many... I, I can barely see she's holding up her hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that's my number glasses three. Back on. Okay. That's number three. Uh, what you got for four and five? You say favorite food, a color, or something like that. Uh, My dick doesn't work. <laughs> we know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, my. P- Damn, I got you, huh? I drink water. <laughs> okay, we'll take that for four. We'll take that for four. <laughs> what you got for number five? Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more shows. I got one coming up on October 14th at the Moroccan Lounge. I peeped that, man. Okay, that's a fun fact. That is. Wait, when are you going on tour too? Before we go. Uh. Have we, have we? We're gonna be doing more shows soon. I don't think any is confirmed or I can announce. Oh, they're confirmed. Okay, I'm doing one in Chicago. I'm doing one in Toronto. I'm doing one in New York. I don't remember Damn. the dates off the top of my head, but it's in November. Damn, that's what's up, man. So then I'll catch you in New York. Boom. Boom. So I'm terrible with these fun facts. That took me so long. And I was very <laughs> that nervous was like the entire a time. ten minute fun fact. It's okay. That was, uh, okay. But at least we got your water one. Uh, yeah, the, I do drink water. Okay. Uh, all right. Wait, where are we? There we go. And two. Okay. He drinks water, guys. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm crawling j- a hole now. <laughs> Slowly, but surely. <laughs> I'll crawl in a hole and die. Okay. I'll let you take us out. I'm Julia Vam Speaker. Bob the Builder. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>